What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. Now this video is going to be covering Batman's issue 142 to issue 144. This is all the year one Joker. The reason that we're putting this video together is because this really highlights what is currently going on in continuity. This is a kind of origin story for the three Jokers. Now Batman created his, his backup psyche which is the Batman of Zurinar. What has just been revealed to us is that the Joker also did the same thing, receiving the same exact training that Batman did. The man who trained them doing this so that he can see the Batman of Zurinar going against an agent of chaos. When these two forces collide, he wants to see who will come out the victor. And so everything the Joker has done since day one pretty much is to get Batman of Zurinar to show his face. In Joker's opinion, the true Batman to show his face. So we're going to learn exactly how the Joker was able to create these backup psyches and how it plays a part moving forward. I will note that there is no real explanation on how there are two other Jokers physical manifestations of Joker. Maybe this is something he created kind of trying to be a god in a sense and create a Joker in his image or based off the image of one of his split personalities. But right here, this is where the transformation begins. This is the birth of the three Jokers. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so this Joker Year One story, it starts us right where we think it would start. Batman and the Red Hood were fighting against one another, and the Red Hood, he fell into the vat. This vat was the transformation. This moment would change the course of history. This moment would cement in time the forever battle, the forever rivalry between Batman and the Joker. This is the moment that started everything. And in these waters, these corrosive, corrosive waters, this is where the Joker's mind begins to split. The voices talk to him. They tell him that he's gonna be fine. That now he has finally been set free. That you have the freedom you have always craved. You are let loose. You are fearless. This is where we see the battle of three Jokers. Each of them fighting for supremacy. This is his transformation. The caterpillar becoming the butterfly. This was the day that the true monster was born. As we turn the page, we are picking up with a woman. A woman by the name of Sally. As she takes the trash out for the day, we see Joker pop up behind her. By the way this conversation goes, this was Joker's significant other. Before the transformation. Before the vat. She says that I don't know you, but he swears that he knows her. That she may not recognize him, but he's gonna fix it. He's gonna fix all of it. That he simply got caught up in something just so terrible. But he's gonna find a way through this. Asking for her to wait for him. This is when her husband comes out and calls her Jody. Asking who that was, what's going on. She has no idea. A very odd encounter. But we pick up six months later. The Joker sits in his room. He stares out the window. Not sure how much time has gone by. But he argues with the voices in his head. Thinking to himself that he had all of this planned out. It started with the heist. Taking what belonged to him. But then it became about chaos. Putting on some face paint in the mirror, we see that he really is talking to the Red Hood. The Red Hood in the mirror letting him know that he was betrayed. That someone in the gang must have talked to either the cops or to Batman. This is where we get a glimpse of what appears to be the future. A narration from Batman saying that they couldn't, they couldn't solve the Joker. And so what they decided to do with him is hook him up to a machine in Arkham. As we see a beautiful illustration of what appears to be Joker strung up like Jesus Christ himself. They hooked him up to what they call the machine. This was Barbara Gordon's idea once she became commissioner. 
In the Joker's mind, this machine will play out the events that he wants to play out. The Joker is still trying to one-up the Batman, but there is one thing about this little imaginary journey. Batman has ensured that even in his wildest imagination, Batman will always win. Unfortunately, a doctor was much too tempted, wanting to study the mind of Joker. He only found himself dead, a note left behind saying that I will see you soon. As we pick up with Joker at a bar, no makeup on, looking like a regular dude. He hears some guys talking, and he really starts to instigate a fight. These guys obviously not wanting to hear anything that he has to say. They begin to rough him up. They give him a good little beatdown. But when he gets the opportunity, he grabs a beer bottle and he takes his shots. This is when somebody grabs his hand. As the Joker turns his face, this man can see that this is in fact Joker. This big burly man standing in front of Joker is 22, part of the Red Hood gang. But ever since Joker had fallen off the map, a lot of the gang had scattered. While there are still some remaining trying to claim the Red Hood gang as their own now, 22 wasn't one of them. After the boss left, he didn't want to continue on. And the word goes out, the Red Hood is still alive. Number 2 is not happy about this. And so their little hit on the gala, they're going to postpone it so they can go take care of number 1. They plan to kill the original Red Hood. This is where we pick up with the Black Hood gang. Ever since the Red Hood gang popped up, there have been little copycat gangs popping up everywhere all over Gotham. The Black Hood gang is one of those gangs. And today, their heist is not going good because Batman's fist has just come through their windshields. By the time the police show up, we see all three of them tied up on the hood. But today, Batman is staying behind. He is here to talk to Jim Gordon. Batman knows that the current commissioner has his eyesights directly on Batman. So he doesn't plan to stick around long. Batman knows that everything happening with these black hood individuals, with the gray ghosts, the red masks, all copycats and distractions. He tells Gordon that the Red Hood Gang has to be their focus. He's not sure that the leader of the Red Hood Gang has actually been taken down. We saw him fall into the chemical vat, but there was no body. He tested the compound, it was corrosive, but not enough to eliminate human remains so quickly. And so battling copycat gangs, they just recovered from the Riddler. Now they have to worry about the leader of the Red Hood gang still being out there, mildly corroded. Now as Joker goes walking through the streets, what he sees up in the sky is Batman swinging through the city. Getting a glimpse of the bat, he immediately panics. He runs as fast as he can. Batman hurt the Joker, thinking that he is both beautiful and terrifying. Getting to the outskirts of the city, he thinks to himself that maybe he just keeps going. Maybe he starts somewhere new. Get away from the Batman completely. But he knows that it doesn't matter who did this to them. Not really. They don't need revenge or violence. He doesn't want any more chaos. Going over to the water and seeing his own reflection. He is terrified of what they are planning to do. This is when the Joker begins to choke his reflection. This is the old him completely dying out. This is the Joker killing the man that he once was. Killing the fear. Embracing the chaos. This is the night that Joker killed the original Red Hood. This is when a man appears on the top of the hill. He says that he has been following him for quite a few months, and he has become impressed. He says that he is the man who can teach him how to harness his mind, to never feel fear again, to be the greatest force that this world has ever known. Wondering what makes him so qualified to do such a feat, he says that he is the smartest man in the world, and he also trained Batman. And this is where we hop over to a future glimpse. Not sure if this is taking place inside the mind of Joker, or if this happens to be after the Joker is able to escape Arkham. Now his escaping Arkham could also just be part of this little machine's mind games that they do on Joker. Making him believe that he got free. Making him believe that he took over the world. But in the reality, 
he is still hooked up to that machine. That eventually, Batman is going to bring him down even if he takes over the entire world. Because no matter what, Batman ensured that the programming would make it to where he always wins. So as we get a glimpse and some narration from Batman, the Joker has called him to where it all started. He says that somewhere in this city, Duke is infected. His powers are absorbing all the light. This is plummeting Gotham into eternal night. That they are all gone and he is all alone. Making his way up to the surface, everybody is infected. An audible virus spread by laughter. And now the world is the Joker. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in the far future. The Joker virus spreading through laughter. And from what he can tell, everybody is already infected. That it simply lies dormant. It waits for the auditory signal triggers. That's when the physical changes come. Of course, Batman has designed earphones that can filter out all the decimal range of this sound. That way he can hear, he can move, he can fight. But even so, Gotham is already lost. But the Joker is still out there. He is baiting Batman, calling him in. Batman does his best to sedate any person that might attack him. But he's running low on sedatives. He knows that all of this is headed back to Ace Chemicals. He is coming for the Joker. He is coming for him for the last time. This is what picks us up in the past. Batman was able to get a cadaver from the university. He is using this to test the chemical that the Joker had fallen into. He learned that the chemicals weren't corrosive enough to eliminate any remains. But they hadn't actually tested this on real skin yet. What they learn is that in two minutes, all pigmentation is gone. It bleaches the skin white. Batman is now certain that the leader of the Red Hood gang is not dead. This is what takes us to the once mentor of Batman. He knew that the Joker wouldn't come to him right away, that he would try to refute this, but he will soon learn that that fear, it is very much alive and thriving in him, and he will seek out to eliminate this fear. When that happens, he will be an unstoppable force. This is what picks us up with the Joker. Headed back to his apartment this evening, he heads inside only to find out that number 22, he's tied up. And in the blink of an eye, we see that the Joker is attacked by members of the Red Hood gang. As this battle unfolds and we see the Joker being stabbed, it looks like they got the jump on him. On the verge of being taken down, that is when Batman comes crashing through the window. As Batman starts to take down members of the Red Hood gang, Joker sees him and he runs. Batman so preoccupied with the members of the Red Hood gang that he can't pursue the Joker. And by the time that he is able to get up, it is already too late. This is what jumps us over to the future. We have Batman on a shoreline. He has found clues, a severed hand, a police revolver, more than likely belonging to a cop. There's also a GCPD ring, one that is dissolving. As he inspects all of this, rising out of the water, we have Joker. He goes on to ask Batman if he is ready to end this, but he does have a secret. His blood pressure is tied to a remote device. If he loses blood or if his blood pressure really goes too high, it will sound the alarm. This will cause every Joker out there that has been infected all to unalive themselves. This whole time, Batman has been holding that revolver in his hand, but he already knew that this was a prop gun, telling Joker that he is predictable as ever. The Joker says that it's different this time, that he wants to watch him. He wants his gears to turn. He wants to see this all take place as he puts it together, all until it is too late and everybody is dead. Taking us back to year one, we have one of the dirty cops that is being interrogated by Jim Gordon, obviously not giving up any information. When one of the other dirty cops comes into the room, saying that they're going to get him out of this, all that good stuff. The plan is to send in an officer that is not necessarily as competent as all the others. This gives him the opportunity to take that guy's gun. But when he does, the cop that helped him out, Manny, he puts a bullet in him. And it doesn't take long for Gordon to piece this together. 
He already knows what's going on. Manny set all of this up so that he could kill him. The one person that could give them the information that they are looking for. And Manny just shot him. But we know that much of the GCPD is corrupt. That they're crooked cops. With Gordon hitting Manny in the face, this gives him a suspension. This is what picks us up with the Joker and Batman's mentor. The Joker has finally come to him. But the Joker has to know why. Why try to make the Joker whole? He says he's a scientist of human behavior. That Batman wrongly thinks he can be a force of order. He is interested in when Batman meets his equal force of chaos. And so the training begins. He teaches him to eradicate fear. To control all of his human emotions. He had once told Bruce that nothing matters and everything matters. That existence is simultaneous cosmic trick. A cosmic joke. The Joker is the physical manifestation of that. As they train, we see that there is a bit of a transformation. The mentor Daniel is no longer here. His name is Kar M. Zed, a fragment of Daniel put aside when he is needed, when he needs anger. This is obviously where Batman learned how to create the personality of Batman of Zurin R. This mentor Daniel is the one that taught him how to split his personality. Now that he has taught Joker how to conquer fear, he is going to teach him exactly how to create. It is time that he teaches all of this to Joker. And he exceeds immediately. He knows the potential of these backups. This is the origin of the three Jokers. The first is the clown. Laughter and devilish bursts of forth. An imp with a demon side. The second is simply that demon. And the third... Calm like a black ocean, and much like the ocean, all that waits for you is cold death. Daniel has created his most perfected creation. As we jump over to the future, Batman has earplugs in, but he is pretending like the Joker virus has taken him over. He makes Joker believe that the Joker has won. He does all of this so that he can get to the GCPD. As the Joker follows along laughing at Bruce, trying to figure out what he's really up to here. This is when a lasso gets wrapped around him. It is none other than Catwoman. Selina had figured out what was going on. She has taped up her ears so that she hears nothing. So as Batman tries to let her know that he hasn't been taken over, in sign language, he lets her know that it is him and he is good. In that moment, the two of them embrace. But she lets him know that she came here because she couldn't find another safe place to keep all of them. Opening up the door, we see that the Bat family is in the jail cell. All of them infected by the Joker virus. Of course, while all of this is happening, the Joker is still here. Sneaking up behind Selina, taking out her earpiece, and he laughs. In his laughter, Selina is taken over. She begins to attack Batman, and then the Joker opens up the cell door. The Bat family is let loose. It is Batman versus everybody that he loves, all infected with the Joker virus. As we jump back to year one, the Joker has gotten rid of all his fear. And the Joker goes on to let the good doctor know that you helped create me. You helped create Batman. And so that makes Batman like a brother. But that also makes Daniel like their father. And the Joker really hated his father. Joker having a knife in hand, he lunges at Daniel. He thrusts that knife right into his flesh. Daniel thrown off guard, recognizing that the Joker is fast. Not believing that he was ever this fast before. He believed himself to be the smartest man alive. Today, the Joker proved that to be false. Today, he was tricked by the Joker. But as he dies, he knows that ultimately, his goal was accomplished. He created chaotic perfection. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we pick up with Batman standing against his family. His family, the most dangerous collection of people that exist in the world. And after all of this time, age has caught up with Bruce. Luckily for him, the Joker virus, it makes them less lethal and more like rabid dogs. But he knows that he doesn't want to stay here and fight. He pops all of his smoke grenades and he takes off. He knows that they're going to get out into the world. They could hurt people, maybe even worse. But Batman needs to end all of this. 
he has to find the Joker. This is his top priority. Joker has been leaving a trail of clues. All of this somehow connected to the GCPD, and he is running out of time. This is what takes us to the past. Bruce Wayne has set up kind of a fundraiser for the opera. Anybody that is anybody finds themselves here. Now Bruce is doing this in the hopes to draw out the Red Hood gang. They have a new leader. They have been trying to figure out who this may be. The hope is to lure them out of the shadows so that he can handle them. This is where we see him having a conversation with Jim Gordon, currently a detective in the GCPD. He knows that one of the other detectives, Manny, he is part of the Red Hood gang. And even though Jim Gordon is suspended, he's still going to keep an eye on him, still going to track him and see what he's doing. Manny, along with some other officers, they are headed into the precinct, catching themselves one half heck of a bust, two dozen bricks of cocaine, but Manny flaunts his corruption very openly. It is very obvious to anybody in this precinct that he is not a clean cop, as Jim Gordon walks inside saying that he simply forgot something because he is suspended, so there's no reason for him to be here. But as he goes inside, there's a clown holding balloons, talking about some kind of assault at a kid's party. They don't know it, but this is the Joker. He is sitting here waiting and plotting. He's got something up his sleeve, and the entire precinct is gonna feel it. But they are too preoccupied with what is going on with Manny. As they go to lock all of this up in evidence, Manny and his guys, they take out one of the cops. They tase him and put him down to the ground. All of the cameras go offline. Jim Gordon knows that they are not gonna be hitting Bruce's little fundraiser. The Red Hood gang is hitting the GCPD. And this is when all hell breaks loose. A man with a red hood jumping in and trying to take out Jim Gordon. Many more coming through the front door. Quickly and with precision, they take over the precinct. This is when the commissioner goes to rush outside. But when he does, he sees a note from Batman saying, I know everything. In all of the chaos, Jim Gordon has to end up killing his friend. A cop that he once knew, but didn't know that he was part of the Red Hood gang. But the gang members, they grab everything that they can and they go to head out. As they load up the van, nobody noticed the clown knocked unconscious, lighting the ends of his balloons. As these balloons float up to the ceiling, they explode. And with that explosion, the entire ceiling comes down. What was above them was the GCPD armory. Joker with grenade and AK-47 in hand. He is about to make all of them pay. Take out the cops and the Red Hood gang at the same time. As Batman begins to investigate, trying to figure out what is actually going on here. This is the far future. He is following the Joker's trail. As he investigates, he looks into Commissioner McCloud. Now, this is the commissioner that we see in the past. A man that was only commissioner for a few months, but ended up in prison. Going into another room, this is where he runs into Red Hood. Red Hood, who has been infected by the Joker virus. Using a sedative, Batman is able to put him down, and he continues his investigation. He thinks about Jason, how he may have hurt him over the years, but Joker is the one that killed him, making him into another Red Hood. But Jason, he wasn't the second Red Hood. He is the third Red Hood, because the second one was Commissioner McCloud. All of this leads Batman to the Commissioner's office. In this office, he finds a small bag, some kind of device inside, mechanisms to create fake laughter, but no sound comes out of this device. The decimals are too high for Batman to hear. This is when a bat comes crashing into the window, and Joker is there telling Batman that I could have killed you at any time, at any point over the years. But he has lived because Joker has let him live, because the Joker loves him, and Batman says that he has let him live even though he hates him. But the bat here, it is here for a reason. It is part of Joker's plan. And this is when he notices that the bat near Jason's body gets rid of the Joker virus. This is what takes us back to the past. 
Jim Gordon facing off against the commissioner. The commissioner swearing that he is going to kill Jim. Jim Gordon is the only one that has seen him who knows he is leading the Red Hood game. This is when Jim shows that the cameras are back on. Before this little confrontation, Jim Gordon decided that he was going to turn all of the surveillance back on. This makes the commissioner immediately attack. The rest of the Red Hood gang, they take off without him. But when they go to open up the bags, the entire vehicle fills up with some kind of substance that causes them to crash. To flee the vehicle, Jim Gordon and the commissioner finding themselves in the main room of the GCPD. Jim telling him that I wanted to bring you here so everybody could watch as I stomp you. And that is exactly what Jim Gordon does. Knocking the commissioner straight out. He plans to carve out the rest of the rot that lies inside the police department. Or he is going to die trying. This is where we pick up with one of the detectives, Detective Manny. He thought he made a getaway with all of those goods from the precinct. Only to be captured by the Joker. The Joker plans to have some fun with him. But Commissioner McCloud, he plans to use him for some experimentation. Experimentation for the Joker virus. This is where it all originated from. Laughter was the poison. Bats were the antidote. The echolocation sound that they made caused the virus to be cured. And so Batman riding on a horse through Gotham City, having the bats follow him and curing all those in their path. He sends out this information to countries across the world. The Joker virus has been cured, and Joker disappears. But this was the final knife in Batman, his last bit of sweet revenge. He gave Batman a problem, and he gave him the solution. He watched Batman play this game. Commissioner McCloud was patient zero. Joker could have let the world tear itself apart. So the question remains and sits at the base of all of this. After all of this time, this man, this demon, this whirlwind of controlled chaos, how many times over the years could he have simply won? How many times could he have taken out Batman and called it a day? The truth is, after all of these years, to the Joker, it is nothing more than a sick game. That if he truly wanted to end it, he would end it. As we pick up back at year one, Commissioner McCloud is about to be sentenced. The Joker has shown up to that bar where he was getting beat up. He walks inside, he locks the door, he turns off the lights, and the chaos ensues. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Definitely a fun issue. All of this really coming full circle. So what we're seeing is that Commissioner McCloud, he was a dirty commissioner, along with a handful of detectives, all of them part of the Red Hood gang. When the Joker became the Joker, he was no longer the Red Hood, and so the leadership needed to be filled. That's where Commissioner McCloud comes into play. He becomes the second iteration of Red Hood, eventually Jason Todd becoming the third. But because of all of this, the Joker used him as an experiment. He used the commissioner to create the Joker virus perfecting it. He releases it upon the world and then he gives Batman the antidote after he is done playing his game. All of this alluding to the fact that the Joker is the superior. He is the better. He is Batman's better. That if he so chose, this could be over tomorrow. Because of Batman's codes, because of how he views the world, there are lines that he says he will not cross. Lines that are too far for him, but the Joker is without limitations. Like Batman said, a whirlwind of controlled chaos. And we are seeing more and more that when chaos meets order, order doesn't stand up to the challenge. That it is only when chaos decides to stop can order return. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to think on this. I like the concept that Joker has always had the ability to take down Batman just like Batman has always had the ability to take down Joker. Joker won't do it because he's having too much fun with this game because he says he loves Batman. A sick obsession infatuation. Batman on the other hand, he won't end Joker because no matter how much he hates Joker, nothing will allow him to break the code, the vow to himself. 
So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything going on with Batman, with the Joker year one, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It's going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.